We saw in the prior session that a company expects to lose a number of units as part of their normal production process, and that is called our normal loss. But what happens if we lose more units than we expected to lose? Perhaps our input is a thousand units, and our expected output is nine hundred units. But then maybe our actual output is only eight hundred and fifty units, so we have lost more units than we planned. If we lose more units than we expected to lose, then we have an abnormal loss. So abnormal losses are unexpected losses in our production process. And they occur when our actual output is less than our expected output. So the number of good units which we have output from our process is less than we had expected or planned. The number of abnormal loss units we have. Is just the difference between our expected output and our actual output. So our abnormal loss then is the units we didn't expect to lose. And again, we need to understand how we deal with abnormal loss in our process accounts and what value we place. On abnormal loss units. So we'll have a look at an exercise. So we are told then a process has a normal loss of five percent, which can be sold for five pounds per ton. And we now know how to deal with our normal losses. In a period, our input materials were 160 tons at 23 pounds per ton, and our conversion costs. So our labour and our overheads were three thousand two hundred, and now we are told that our output was a hundred and fifty tons. So we need to prepare the process account, the scrap sales account, and now we will also have an abnormal losses and gains account. So we'll begin with our process account. We'll start as normal, recording our input costs on the debit side, and then we'll look at our outputs on the credit side. And when we get to that point, we're going to see that we have an abnormal loss. So our first input cost, then, as always, is our materials. 160 units, with a cost of 23 pounds each. So the total cost then will be 3,680. Then we have our conversion costs. No unit value. Total cost three thousand two hundred pounds. Let's look to our output side then, the credit side. We know we always start our output side by looking at our normal loss units. So our normal loss is five percent of our input units. So five percent of a hundred and sixty gives us eight. How do we value our normal loss in the process account? Well, either the value of our normal loss is zero, or we value it at the scrap value. And we're told in the question that our normal loss has a scrap value of five pounds. 
So the total value of our normal loss units then is £40. Next thing we will consider then is our output to finished goods. We were told in the question that our output was 150 units. So let's write that in. So, let's see where we're at then. On our input side, the total number of units is 160. But what do we have on our output side? On our output side, we have our normal loss of 8 units and our output to finished goods of 150 units. So we have only accounted for 158 of the original units we input. This must mean then that we had an abnormal loss. So our abnormal loss is our balancing figure of two units. If we look at what's happened for this company, our input units were 160. Our normal loss units are 8, which means our expected output is our input units minus our normal loss, so our expected output is 152. Our actual output was only 150 units. And as we've seen, if our actual output is less than our expected output, then we have an abnormal loss. And the abnormal loss units are just the difference between our expected and our actual outputs. So going back to our question then, we have now accounted for all of the units. We know what's happened to each of the 160 units. So our last step now is to put in our valuations. So we're missing our valuations for our output to finished goods and our abnormal loss. Now, even when we have an abnormal loss, we will always use the same formula to calculate the cost per unit of good units. So in the last session, we said that we calculate our cost per unit using the formula total input cost minus the scrap value of normal loss all divided by our expected output. This formula does not change, even when we have an abnormal loss or, as we'll see in the next session, an abnormal gain. We will still use that same formula to value our good output. So we can just put in the numbers then, our cost per unit then will be equal to our total input costs of 6,880 minus the scrap value of our normal loss, 40, divided by our expected output. So our cost per unit is £45. And we can use this then to calculate the total value of our output to finished goods. So we have 150 units of output to finished goods multiplied then by our cost per unit of 45. So the total value of our output to finished goods is 6,750. 
So our last step then is to calculate the total value of our abnormal loss. In the process account, abnormal loss is always valued at the cost per unit value. So we're going to put a value of £45 on each of these two units. So the total value to the company of those abnormal loss units is £90. Now if we add this all back up, we should balance and get 6,880 on each side. So, we've done our process account, we still need to deal with our scrap sales and our abnormal losses and gains account. Our scrap sales, we know how to start this one. In our scrap sales account, we always begin by recording the normal loss units which we're going to sell for scrap. So for this company, their normal loss, the eight units for 40 pounds. Let's have a look at our abnormal losses and gains account. Abnormal losses then, as we've seen, are shown on the credit side of the process account. So we will record abnormal losses on the debit side of our abnormal losses and gains account. So we have our abnormal loss of two units and we said the total cost to the company then of those two units was their cost per unit value of £45 each, so £90 in total. Now we need to think about then what's going to happen to these two units. As a company, what are we going to do with the two abnormal loss units? We know because we've lost them in our production process, they are not going to continue on to finished goods. However, if we are able to sell our normal loss units for scrap, then we are also able to sell our abnormal loss units for their scrap value. So for these two units then, instead of continuing on to finished goods, we are going to sell them for scrap. So we'll record that then in our abnormal losses and gains account and in our scrap sales account. So these two units were selling for scrap and what is the scrap value of the two units? How much will the company get in for that? Well it will be the same as the scrap value of our normal loss units, which was £5 per unit. So the total scrap value of these two units then is £10. Now we need to record that increase in scrap sales then in our scrap sales account. So we increase our scrap sales on the debit side. So now we'll record, in addition to selling our normal loss units, we are also going to sell our two abnormal loss units. So we'll get £10 for those two units. So just closing out our scrap sales account then, we've no other activity. We'll get cash in the door then for those 10 units and our total cash in will be £50. So now our scrap sales account is balanced for the period. Our last step then 
is we need to complete our abnormal losses and gains account. Let's see where we are. If we look at our unit columns first, we can see in our debit and credit side our units balance. So we recorded our two units from the process account and then we said we know what we're going to do with these two units. We'll sell them for scrap. The problem we appear to have though is our valuation figures. So in our process account, the value we put on our abnormal loss units was the cost per unit value of £45. But when we're recording the scrap sale of those units, the value is only £10 because that's all we're going to get for them. The difference between these two figures is the reduction in value to the company of our abnormal loss units. So we expected these units to continue on to finished goods, in which case their value would have been £45 each. That's what we expected to happen. But the actual value of these units now, because we have lost them in our process, the actual value of the units is only £10, the scrap value. The reduction in value of these units is a loss to the company. And as such, our balancing entry in our abnormal losses and gains account will be to record an income statement adjustment. So a loss recorded in our income statement. So we can show our balancing figure then as an income statement loss of the reduction in value 80 pounds. So now our monetary figures balance. To summarize then, in a question on abnormal loss, there are a number of key rules you just must remember. So we'll summarize them so you have them together. First of all, as we saw, in the process account, Abnormal loss is valued at the cost per unit. The loss reported in the income statement is the reduction in value of the abnormal loss units. And we calculate the reduction in value of the abnormal loss units by just comparing their cost per unit value, what we thought they'd be worth, and their scrap value, so what they are now actually worth. So the reduction in value is going to be the number of units multiplied by the cost per unit minus the number of units multiplied by the scrap value. And that will be the loss we report in our income statement.